Today I'm making meatloaf. Super easy, super simple. You're gonna you're gonna start off with two pounds of hamburger meat, your choice. I just grabbed some from the store. <clears throat> Put this in a mixing bowl, a large mixing bowl. And I'm gonna be this is the packet of meatloaf seasoning. It's got the instructions on the back, but I'm still gonna do it. But two pounds of ground beef, two eggs lightly beaten. You can just put them in a bowl and a fork. Here's my eggs in a bowl. I'm going to just lightly beat them with a fork until the yolks are all together. And dump that in our bowl. Set that aside. I need a half a cup of milk. Here's my half a cup of milk going in. I need a fourth a cup of dry breadcrumbs. I just bought breadcrumbs. Here's my breadcrumbs. Half a cup of ketchup, chili sauce, or tomato sauce. And that is optional. My mother uses ketchup. I use tomato sauce. And I do put ketchup on the top. Um, usually about three-fourths of the way of it cooking, but I will show you that later. Now, this can is a 8-ounce can, but it's still halfway full. It only calls for half a cup of tomato sauce. So I just measured that out. And I'm going to put the sauce in. I mix it with my hands. <laughs> your hands is your best tool. It's cold, but it's okay. Now it doesn't call for it, but I love onions in everything that I make. And I'm going to show you a slight or easy way to chop an onion. And it makes it easier. You see this end? This is this is the bottom. This is the top. You can cut the top off, but do not cut that bottom off. That's what's going to hold it together as we dice it. But I make four slivers around it, and I'll show you why. Those four slivers makes it easy to peel the onion. I'm taking off more of the onion than necessary. I need to stop that. Took off a chunk right there. That just peels all that. I don't know. I guess the clothing of the onion. I'm sure, it's got a name. Let me toss that into the trash. Okay. So now that we have our onion, which is all being held together by the bottom, what you're going to do is see if I can get that to show better. Yeah. We're going to make... We're cutting, but we're not cutting all the way to the end. We're just making... And as you can see, I'm not cutting very big pieces. You see how, see how wide that is? I want to do that all the way across. And again, I'll show you why in just a second. And I do it all the way down. I just don't go far enough to the root that, or the bottom that we didn't cut off. And now that we've got it cut all the way across, as you can see, I'm going to flip it over and do it again, just the other way. see what I'm doing. Alright, now that we've got our onion like that, we're just going to go on the end right here and cut all the way down. And this makes it where you do not have to dice it. Because as you can see, it comes off already diced. This isn't showing it. 
There we go. As you cut it off, because we made those cuts each way, it comes off already diced. You can do it however you want. And if you have better knife skills, probably be faster, but I don't. And I'm using a little bitty paring knife instead of a chef's knife anyways. The paring knife is perfect when you're cutting those slivers, but a chef's knife is bigger and wider. Anyways, I've got my onion chopped. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my mixture. And that meatloaf seasoning wasn't enough seasoning for my liking. If you know me at all, you will know that I love lots and lots of seasoning in my food. Therefore, I'm going to add some pepper. And I can't get the top to close. So instead of risking pouring too much, I'm just going to do it like that. But I'm using pepper quite a bit. Pepper, salt. You should use salt and pepper in everything. I have no nails. Improvise. Salt. Don't need too much. This is garlic. Love garlic. And it's meatloaf, so it's got Italian flavors anyway, so garlic and, and oregano is just fine. And I am just eyeballing it. And I do have a, a whole onion, but I'm still adding onion powder. Again, I love onion. Just never put as much garlic as you do onion powder, because garlic is way more potent. This is oregano. Just putting some oregano in there. It's already smelling better. Already. Now I'm going to combine this together. I'm sorry, that's the wrong way. Combine the onion and all those seasonings together. Some people like to sweat their onions. And what I mean by that is a tablespoon of olive oil in a saute pan at medium heat. And once your oil is heated, then you can put your onion in there. And kind of, once you see them start sweating and kind of getting a little bit transparent, then you can put them in your, in your meatloaf. I don't mind. And yes, they do cook thoroughly in your meatloaf. But when you sweat the onion, it makes the flavor, some people say, come out more. I don't notice a difference, but you're welcome to try that. And if you don't like onion powder, I mean, if you don't like raw onions... Don't worry, they cook all the way through. You, and there's not even a crunch to them. I'm still gonna add a bit more seasonings. I won't make you watch all that. Okay, now that I've added a bit more seasoning, and what I smell for, is just for to smell that aroma of seasonings. I do not like my food bland. And I always, always cook with extra virgin olive oil because it's healthier. I get this spray for things like this. You're going to get your loaf pan. And my oven is already preheated to 375 per the instructions of the package. I'm going to lightly spray that. I say lightly because hamburger meat produces a lot of grease. I'm going to fill my loaf pan. And you can also take a muffin pan and make meatloaf muffins. And the thing about those is they freeze really well. They heat up in the microwave, especially if you have babies. Perfect. But anytime that you are going to, to freeze food, a tip to that is make sure that you cool it completely. I mean completely cooled. Once it's cooled completely, you can put a piece of parchment paper down on one of your freezer racks, or if you have a deep freeze, you can line a, a like baking sheet with parchment paper. And take your completely cooled down product, it, whether it's meatloaf, the egg bake, um, waffles, pancakes, all those freeze well and heat in the, in the microwave in minutes. 
You can also make those pancakes and the waffles that you make if you have extras. You can freeze them and pop them in the toaster. Perfect. Anyways, you take that, your completely cooled down product, put it on your baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Freeze it completely. It may take a couple hours. Freeze it completely. Make sure it's completely frozen and then store it in a airtight freezer bag. And most freezer things store up to three months in the, in the freezer. Always date your stuff. What I'm doing right here, I will show you. I made it so where the grease will, will go around these pockets and I can drain it throughout the cooking process. Because grease does tug. But there's one of mine. I'm going to go ahead. I don't have a whole lot. It'll still be fine in here. Could make those muffins as well, I guess. But I didn't spray that, did I? Oops. I have to wash that can when I'm done. Cross contamination. It's my product. I mean, it's just for me and mine. So. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put some of those in meatloaf tins because that's not enough to do a loaf. Hold on. Okay, I've got my muffin tin here. I'm going to take just a few, I mean just like a ball. See how big I want it. That's too big. Okay, about the size of the palm of, of your hand. Roll it up. Put it right in there. Way the grease has somewhere to go. Ball the size of the palm of your hand. Roll it up to a good ball. Making a snowball here. Put it in my meatloaf pan. You get the idea. Alright, here's my meatloaf. I've got it covered in tin foil. It's kind of lightly covered so it can vent a little bit. Put that in my oven. I'm going to put my meatloaf muffins right beside it. It's not going to hurt it at all. And I'm going to cook that for about probably an hour. Um, and once that's done, um, about 45 minutes into the cooking process, I will take those out and I will drain the grease. I will top it with ketchup and put it back in and let it finish cooking. And I will keep it uncovered at that point and that will let it get a crust. Um, you can also just top it with ketchup the last five minutes, but it doesn't matter. I just like my ketchup to kind of bake on there and make like a paste. But that's it for meatloaf.